All right, Mr. Kukeski, let's call um, Mr. McLeod's morning. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Kukeski, McLeod. All right, and this is uh, file numbers 24-692 and 23-6748. And uh, we're here for a docket call on both matters and uh, some motions that are noticed up. And do you know how we're proceeding today, Mr. Kukeski? I do, Your Honor. At this time, my client would be offering a plea to the court uh, that he would be pleading to in file 23-6748, count one, or just obstruct, and then amended count two in pair to read uh, safety. In file 24-6892, he'd be pleading to Scott and uh, misdemeanor. Okay. And we have amended informations. Do you consent to the filing of the amended informations, Mr. Kukeski? I would, Your Honor, yes. So, I did have a signed advice of rights. I'm not sure if the court. I do, I have it. Okay. 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 All right, so, Mr. McLeod, would you please stand as best you can raise your right hand for me? You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I'll be God. Put your hand down. And Mr. McLeod, uh, a guilty plea hearing is an important event. It includes the waiver of constitutional rights that you have. So I want you to listen carefully. At any time, if you've got any doubts, questions, or hesitations, just let me know. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and I'm happy to give you more time to talk to Mr. Kuski if you need. Do you understand that? I do. All right, now I have to advise you the maximum penalty that you could face on the, uh, in the file 23-6748, you'd be pleading to resisting and obstructing a conservation officer. That is a high court misdemeanor punishable by a maximum of two years and or a thousand dollar fine. And count two, marine safety operating while impaired. It's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 93 days and or a $300 fine and or 45 days of community service. The court will suspend your privilege to operate a vessel for at least six months to indefinite. The court can order you to repay the cost of prosecution and emergency response. In file 24-6892, you'd be pleading guilty to absconding on a misdemeanor bond as a lesser offense. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days and or a $500 fine. Hang on, I believe that he hasn't been arraigned yet on the 246892. I don't know if we have to do that before the plea. Oh, that's misdemeanor. true. This was an arraignment date on that file. So in, in 6892, Mr. Kukeski uh, will arraign him, arraigning him on the, uh, the amended information. Do you wish to have its allegations read? We wait for reading, Your Honor. Okay. Is a forensic center referral requested in that file? No. Okay. All right, so Mr. McLeod, do you uh, understand the maximum penalty that you could face for that? Okay, and also there's a there's a pending contempt citation for failing to appear and the factual basis you'd put on the record for the absconding uh, would also constitute a factual basis for me to find you in contempt. And that penalty is a maximum of 93 days in jail and or a fine of up to $7,500. Do you understand that, sir? I do. All right. And, um, the absconding charge, well, with it being a misdemeanor, it would be, uh, I don't think it'd be consecutive anyway. Okay. All right, the plea agreement provides in exchange for your plea to those charges that I outlined, the prosecutor will dismiss the original counts and the habitual uh, offender notice. And uh, there's a requirement, uh, there's a sentence agreement that they would run concurrently, which I think with the plea to the misdemeanor would, uh, would be required by law in any event, but the sentence agreement just locks that in and also a sentence agreement for no immediate jail at the time of sentencing. Do you understand the terms of that figure? Mm -hmm. Mr. Kukeski, is that a full, fair, and accurate statement of his terms? It is, Your Honor. Mr. Julian. Yes. It, I'm sorry, but whose hand? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Mr. That's okay. All right, Mr. McLeod, that sentence agreement is not binding on the court, um, meaning if I did not want to follow it, I would not uh, have to. But if I did not follow it, you would be allowed to withdraw your plea, not having received what you bargained for. Do you understand that? Now, there's one exception to that. <clears throat> That's uh, if you were to engage in any misconduct between now and then, 
um, including new crimes or violations of court orders, uh, then by that misconduct, you'd be forfeiting the right to withdraw the plea, even if I didn't follow the sentence agreement. Do you understand that? I do. All right, Mr. McLeod, other than that plea agreement, has anybody promised you anything to get you to plead guilty? Has anybody threatened you to make you do so? No. Is it your own free choice to enter those pleas? Yes. Knowing all this, uh, <clears throat> How do you wish to plead in file 6748 to the charge of resisting obstructing conservation officer list of thoughts? Guilty. How do you wish to plead in count two to operating a, a vessel while impaired? Guilty. And how do you wish to plead in file 6892 to absconding on a misdemeanor bond? Guilty. So Mr. McLeod, back in September of 2023, were you operating a motor vessel uh, on the waters of the state of Michigan? Yes, sir. And was that within the confines of Sheboygan County? Yes, sir. Before you had operated that vessel, had you before or during, I guess, had you consumed alcoholic beverages? And uh, did you end up having any kind of breath or blood test to determine the level of alcohol? In your do you recall what the results of that test were? We had one, three. Okay. And do you acknowledge that that is above the legal limit in the state of Michigan? I do acknowledge that. All right. Um, and did you have some contact with a conservation officer list in Yes. And did that uh, officer give you some lawful commands? Yes. And did you fail to immediately obey those commands? Yes, that's correct. All right. And then you were on a bond in that case representing yourself in that matter. Is that correct? Yes. And did you uh, fail to appear for a court hearing in that file? That's correct. There, and then that resulted in uh, a forfeiture of your bond? That's correct. All right, Mr. Kukuski, are you satisfied with the factual basis to all three points? I am satisfied, Your Honor. Ms. Kittrich? Yes. All right, um, Mr. Kukuski, are you aware of any other promises, threats, or impeachments? I'm not aware of any. Ms. Kittrich? No, Your Honor. And Mr. Kukuski, um, do you believe that I have complied with the requirements of MCR 6.302? I believe the court has. Ms. Kittrich? Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. McLeod. Uh, We've asked you a lot of questions. We've given you a lot of information. I just want to confirm for you uh, that that's your own free choice to enter these guilty plea hearings today. That's correct. Well, Mr. McLeod, I find that your plea is knowingly, understandingly, and voluntarily made, and that there is a sufficient basis in fact and law to believe that you're guilty of those offenses. Uh, so I'll accept your pleas in both files. I will also find you in contempt uh, for the pending contempt citation for failing to appear. Um, we need to set a sentencing date. So, so let me ask you, the, the, the uh, intent of that sentence agreement, um, no immediate jail, no additional jail at the time of sentencing, does that contemplate that uh, you remain in custody until that date? Yes. Okay. Um, Agent Big and Agent Young, I know you're kind of short-handed. Uh, do you know how quickly you could get uh, a pre-sentence report done in, uh, I would only, let's see. I do have a motion before the court on the bond issue. I would forego the motion with regards to the abstaining charge. Okay, gotcha. But I, I, okay, well, well, let's hear the let's hear the bond motion before we set a sentencing date. Very good, Your Honor, and, and thank you, um, Your Honor. I, I know Mr. McLeod has had, um, I guess, some difficulties with court here. Uh, he certainly. Admits those, acknowledges that, uh, is moving forward in positive direction uh, with this case and with his uh, acceptance of responsibility today, Your Honor. Um, he's taken another step in that positive direction uh, with the court. I, I did provide as part of my motion several letters from individuals who he's uh, contracted to do work for, um, outside work that work that would require him to um, be working outside, obviously getting into uh, sort of a colder months. Uh, those jobs, uh, I believe if he's uh, continuing to be incarcerated, will he'll lose those jobs. Uh, he's got money out there, uh, materials. Uh, he's the sole provider for his family. Um, you know, he certainly acknowledges um, he's got to go to court. Uh, he, he missed his court appearance. He was arrested on a warrant, um, and he sat since. He sat probably... 45 to 50 days, I would imagine. Um, he's as close to the 60. But we're asking for, for some mercy from the court to allow him on bond. I, I, 
Maybe we would take a tether if your honor um, thinks that that would be appropriate or feels that would uh, necessarily make him uh, appear for court. He will be here uh, for a sense. He obviously just to please um, the, the resist obstruct is the uh, charge that he has pled to that the court would be sentencing on the, the highest, I guess, possibility of uh, incarceration. He doesn't score up too high in my book. I didn't have him scoring up very high at all. Um, if he does violate and he doesn't show up, he obviously loses the agreement of any further incarceration or no immediate incarceration that me and the prosecutor have entered on that. Um, I think the message has been sent, uh, just to say the least. And uh, we've just asked him the court, uh, look into its heart. And the judge one time told me not to sentence or make a decision for a place of anger, but uh, to, to step back and, and just reasonably um, put forth an order or, or an opinion. And, I think that's uh, no better wisdom has been said in, in these matters. And so we're asking the court just for a reinstatement of his bond. Whatever conditions, additional conditions, the court wants to put on there, uh, we would gladly uh, follow those conditions. Five okay. Well, well, I, I assure you, I'm not, I'm not angry at Mr. McLeod. We've just been trying to move the case forward and uh, okay. in, a, in a responsible way. Ms. Goodrich, uh, people's position. Oh, Your Honor, I'd ask to uh, deny that motion. Apparently, there's some miscommunication between Mr. Krakowski and I, but my intent in that plea agreement was that uh, Mr. McLeod would sit until time of sentencing and then uh, no immediate sentencing thereafter. He has, has not done well on bond. Uh, so it's my intent to get to sentencing and include that matter. Um, so I would ask the court to, to deny that based on his performance on bond. Are there other uh, by violations that he's been brought to the court on? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I was a promoter. <clears throat> this <clears throat> All right. Well, <clears throat> I guess is your position that uh, if he's not in custody from today forward, that that uh, that entitles you to withdraw from this plea? Is there some ambiguity about the meaning of that sentence agreement or? Yeah, I, I think there was some miscommunication. I thought the intent and what we had discussed was that he would sit until sentencing. And then, um, that's some of the reason that consideration was given in the plea offer that was given. Okay, and that, that, that is typically that the, on me. That was, I did not. That's typically the practice uh, where, where it says um, no immediate jail at time of sentencing versus sometimes if it's uh, going to be at time of then there's a stipulation for release. I guess that brings me to my next question. Uh, Agent Fagan, Agent Young, I know you're short handed. Um, I would, well, could counsel approach for a second? All right, and uh, back on the record, I wanted to consult with counsel about um, possible sentencing dates. And so Mr. Kukeski, would you waive uh, the requirement of a pre-sentence investigation in this matter? I would, Your Honor. Ms. Goodrich, would the people waive it? I would. Okay, it's a high court misdemeanor. Uh, obviously, it's not a case where we'd be sending him to prison, so I think we can certainly waive the requirement of a pre-sentence report. That means, Mr. McLeod, that we can schedule your sentencing on a much more expedited basis. Uh, so I'll deny the motion to reinstate bond at this time, but we'll schedule sentencing for one week from today, September 17th at 11 a.m., and I'll hear allocution from both <laughs> sides at that time. If you wish, either side can file a written sentencing recommendation memo, but it certainly isn't required you know, either. Uh, but I won't require the DOC to prepare any, any pre-sentence investigation. All right, so we'll see you next week at 11 a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you.